Some people talk about abortion and the hard cases. My little fingers are doing this because I want to emphasise that the word hard cases is being used to separate cases of fatal fetal abnormality, for example, uh, cases of termination where a woman's been raped, cases of a termination where there's suicide or serious mental health, cases where there's a serious risk to the woman's life. And indeed, they are hard cases. But all cases where a woman decides to terminate a pregnancy are hard. It's a deeply personal and difficult decision to make. It's about 3,000 women on average a year uh, who leave this country and it's about the five women stroke girls per day that take the abortion pill. So we exile them, we transport them out of the country, off you pop women and girls, that's okay, get it done elsewhere, it's not going to be a reality in this country. People need to think about that, you need to think how it feels to be exiled out of your own country. Look around you at the sort of images that adorn posters up and down the length and breadth of the country. The sort of lies and misinformation and distortion that puts it out there about what it is to be an aborted baby, an aborted fetus. Even listening to some people debating, saying their baby smiled at them at 12 or 13 weeks when they miscarried. I'm sorry. At 12 weeks, a foetus is the size of a pea, where there isn't actually even a heartbeat. And the medics have told us, and it's been proven, there is a primitive pulse, there is no heartbeat at that time. Most abortions take place before 12 weeks, because women are responsible. That is what the other side wants. They want to make it impossible for the most vulnerable, for the least well off. Terminations and abortions are always possible when you have the resources and nobody need know about it. And it's not just the choice to have a termination, it's the choice to be able to have a family. In this society, where you cannot rent a flat because the rents have gone through a roof, where it's impossible to get a council house, where more than likely you could end up homeless if you go into private rental accommodation and have a child, where more than likely you're in a precarious job, where health services are so bad that they have uh, outsourced not just your reproductive rights but they've also outsourced your cervical screening test and made a bags of it where you can't get a child assessed when they have special needs where you can't get assistance in classes for them where they need support in schools where schools in working class areas have been run down to the point that teachers and parents struggle to do simple things like replace the lino and the toilet seats we live in a situation where there are two types of class. There's the well-off and there's the rest of us. And the rest of us are the ones that are being subjected to being told, you continue that pregnancy even though you don't want it, can't afford it, or it'll mess with your head or your life or the rest of your family. And that's what's wrong here. So I'm appealing to you to see it that way. This is not about your particular morals, your particular ethos. I totally respect that. But you've got to consider all women and give them the right to choose, the right to make their own decisions. And that choice has to be about fighting for a better society, as well as dealing with the crisis that we face on a daily basis in this one. On May the 25th, vote yes for decency, vote yes for choice, vote yes and trust women.